Mr. President, five months. Five months, that's how long it's been since the National Institutes of Health and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention formally asked the United States Congress to respond to a public health emergency to combat the Zika virus. Five months. In that time, we've seen the number of Americans infected with Zika soar to 3,667. Of those, 599 are pregnant women. In Illinois, 26 confirmed cases of Zika. Five months. To date, seven infants have been born with Zika-related birth defects in the United States. Five pregnancies have ended because of Zika-related birth defects. Five months. Last week, Utah health officials announced the first U.S. death related to the Zika virus. Five months. In Puerto Rico, where this situation gets worse by the day, officials reported a one-week jump of 40% in the number of pregnant women on the island diagnosed with Zika. Five months. 3,667 Americans to date infected with Zika that we know, 599 pregnant women, seven babies born with severe birth defects, five ended because of the virus, and the first Zika-related death. Five months since the President of the United States said this was a public health crisis, the Republican-controlled Congress has waited five months to respond to this crisis. And now, we're on the verge of leaving town for seven more weeks, until September, after the conventions. And we'll leave without providing our federal health agencies the money they urgently need to fight Zika. By the time Congress returns, it will be seven months since the President asked Congress on an emergency basis to deal with this public health crisis of Zika. Every single American should be disgusted by this, and every single member of Congress should be embarrassed. What is perhaps most infuriating about this situation is that we have a bipartisan Zika funding bill ready to go, and the President would sign it tomorrow if he could. In May, the Senate passed the bill. Now, I'll concede it was three months after the President asked for it, but we did pass a bill. We had 89 votes supporting a bill to provide $1.1 billion to fight this public health disaster. It was less than the President asked, but with its good faith bipartisan effort, supporting mosquito control programs, lab capacity, surveillance efforts, and maternal health services. It wasn't the bill that Democrats would have written or the President asked for. It wasn't really the bill that Republicans wanted to start with. It was a bipartisan, good faith compromise. Well, what happened to that bill after it left the Senate? Instead of that bipartisan bill moving through the House and quickly to the President, it went into a conference committee. And that's when things went terribly bad. Right before adjourning for the 4th of July recess, the House Republicans decided to take our bipartisan bill with 89 votes and load it up like a right-wing Christmas tree. They decided to attack environmental protection <clears throat> by overturning the clean water regulations. They decided to block money to women's health providers. Most people remember when the Republicans were prepared to shut down the government of the United States over the funding of Planned Parenthood. Now, in this bill that they've sent back to us from conference, they're prepared to shut down our response to this public health crisis of the Zika virus in order to defund Planned Parenthood. It also undermines the Affordable Care Act, which has been a traditional whipping boy of the right wing, and it raids Ebola funds. They knew that Democrats wouldn't accept these writers. They made it as disgusting and repugnant politically as it could be. And remember, they said, we don't need Ebola funds. Turns out we do. To this day, the CDC still has 80 disease specialists stationed in West Africa. A few months ago, there was an Ebola cluster in Guinea. 
In order to respond to that outbreak, that unexpected outbreak, the D CDC had to vaccinate 1,700 people, track 20,000 people through surveillance, open five emergency operations centers in two different countries. The Republicans say, well, we'll just take the money away from Ebola. Maybe things will work out fine in Africa. Well, the Republican bill proposes decimating our Ebola prevention funding and diverting the resources. The majority leader and the majority whip claim the House Zika bill is a compromise and bipartisan. Let me be clear, it is neither. It is not a compromise and it is not bipartisan. Not a single Democrat signed the conference report that came out of the House, despite the fact that 89 senators of both parties had voted for bipartisan funding in the Senate. When they took it into conference, it turned into a political football. This is a cynical attempt by the Republicans in the House to hijack a public health crisis and push a grab bag of their favorite unrelated poison pill riders. That's why their bill, as shown by the vote here last month, is a non-starter in the Senate and it's a non-starter with the American people. What is being dirt lost during this entire posturing and politicizing is the very real toll that Zika is taking. During the past five months, we have discovered new and alarming things about Zika. We know that the Zika virus can be transmitted through sexual contact. Women infected with Zika in their first trimester face a 13% likelihood of a baby born with a serious problem. Even if a pregnant woman doesn't show any signs of infection, her baby can be born with serious physical and neurological disorders. Five months since the president asked for funding, this Republican-led Congress just can't get it right. 89 senators, Democrats and Republicans, came up with a bipartisan answer, and they couldn't get it through the House of Representatives. And we sit here today languishing in this political mess. Researchers are examining the links to other negative health consequences, eye infections that lead to blindness, autoimmune disorders that cause paralysis related to the Zika virus. And what about the impact of maternal stress on the baby? I spent the last several weeks meeting with maternal and fetal health care providers and community health leaders in Chicago, just yesterday uh, down in the Belleville area, and they have shared with me the fear and stress their patients are experiencing. Hundreds of pregnant women in Illinois are seeking care and advice from doctors. They've undergone tests to make sure that their babies are safe. Sadly, three of those Illinois women have learned they are already infected with Zika. I'm sick and tired of this political game being played by the House and Senate Republicans when it comes to a public health crisis. The president got it right five months ago. Why can't this Congress get it right now? before we leave for this seven-week vacation. Enough is enough. It's time for the Republican majority in the House and the Senate to do their job, respond to this public health crisis in a sensible, bipartisan way, just as our bill that passed the Senate with 89 votes addressed, instead of making this a political test for the most outrageous claims. Oh, did I mention the fact that in conference, the House and Senate Republicans decided to add another provision when it came to this public health crisis. That provision would allow the display of Confederate flags in veteran cemeteries. Give me a break. What does that have to do with this public health crisis or honoring our men and women in the military or our veterans who have served our country so well? Mr. President, I yield the floor.